Right, welcome back, Social 10. This is the second part of Historic Globalization on Canada. And I promised that now I'm going to give you some answers. So, in the beginning, I asked you to do some textbook stuff and look at an article about Canada's inequality of access to clean water. But I'd like to spend a little bit more time dissecting a couple of these sources. So, this source read. It sometimes seems to Indians that Canada shows more interest in preserving its rare whooping cranes than its Indians. And Canada, the Indian notes, does not ask its cranes to become Canada geese. So Harold Cardinal is, Im is implicitly connecting this, this metaphor of whooping cranes and geese to the concept of a simulation. This is from a a uh, response by Harold Cardinal in, the, in his The Unjust Society. And the title of that is a reference to this idea of trying to create a just society, a fair society. And some were suggesting in, in the late 60s, early 70s, that for there to be a just society, the Indian Act needed to um, be replaced and Canada's indigenous peoples needed to be assimilated. And Harold Cardinal is saying no, 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 no. Canada does not ask its whooping cranes to be assimilated into Canada geese because it understands whooping cranes are big, beautiful, nearly extinct birds. And, and yet, Harold is making this connection, this parallel with Canada's indigenous peoples and saying, why are we asking Canada's indigenous peoples to be assimilated? So that's why he says, I'd like to know how they got their deal, right? Indians hold no grudge against this big, beautiful, nearly extinct birds, but we would like to know how they manage their deal, saying, you know, why is the government, the federal government of Canada, protecting the whooping crane, and but not protecting us? So, this was written as a response to Canada's uh, white paper uh, by the Liberal government in the late 1960s that looked at to what extent should we create a just society in Canada, uh, based on equality and eliminating the Indian Act. And basically what that read like was, we want Canada's indigenous people to be assimilated. And Harold Cardinal, among uh, many, many other leaders in Canada's indigenous um, community, was upset with the desire to assimilate them. So, next up, a few decades later, we have the Reconciliation Commission. And there's some background here on a Wikipedia site about uh, what is the Canada Reconciliation Commission. Established in 2008, the purpose of documenting the history and lasting impacts of Canada's Indian residential school system on Indigenous students and their families. And uh, you, know, you can go a little bit more into this article and see um, the connection to cultural genocide and some calls to action within the community. So uh, there's some background information here for you to look at and following the background information we have this cartoon and the cartoon is suggesting that uh, the Conservative Party of Canada that brought in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission um, you know they're saying we'd like to talk but there's no listening devices there's only loudspeakers so the federal government is, is not listening to Canada's indigenous peoples they're talking to them and if truth and reconciliation is the goal somewhere down the road, they're not going to get there because this vehicle is not built to move. It's missing some key components. It's missing wheels. So Canada's Truth and Reconciliation Commission is supposed to lead to action in um, some kind of response to this legacy of cultural genocide. The cartoonist is suggesting that the Conservative Party of Canada under Stephen Harper at the time, that was the government, is going to be unable to achieve truth and reconciliation because the vehicle that they've put into place is missing some key components. And the key components are literally because the, the vehicle isn't listening to and consulting the Indigenous people as they're meant to do by definition. It's more about the government speaking to people and they're not really gonna learn by speaking to others. They need to listen to others. So if it is a call to action, if it is meant to uh, be a response to cultural genocide, the cartoonist is saying that the government needs to do more listening 
to Canada's indigenous leaders. Listen to those testimonies, right? Rather than a loudspeaker talking about things. So calls to action, right? Um, you know, how can they deal with the legacy and reconciliation? What are they going to do for the child welfare? What are they going to do for education and language and culture and health and justice? The cartoon is suggesting that justice and health and language and culture and education and child welfare are not being addressed. That these programs are not going to be enough. So, in terms of the transformative power of cultural contact and the legacies of historic globalization in Canada, one of the legacies we have is the relationship between Canada's Indigenous peoples and new Canadians, European Canadians, and eventually Asian and Af African Canadians as well. And a part of that story has been a story where there has been moments of, of abuse and there's been an attempt to reconcile that, but this cartoon is suggesting that the reconciliation is not likely to happen. Now we have another source here for number five. It says, what does the following data reveal about cultural consequences of globalization? It's interesting to note that there are advocates saying that they should, Canada's indigenous peoples would be better off if they strengthen their own culture, even if it means that that means that they're more separate from the rest of Canada. So, that's the biggest category I see. And the smallest category I see is integrating more into a broader Canadian society. So when asked, overall Indigenous Canadians would be better off if, majority of people don't think assimilation is the path to you know, a better life for Canada's Indigenous peoples. Most people would suggest that even if it means um, separating from the rest of Canada, pulling them apart from the rest of Canada, if it means strengthening their culture, revitalizing their culture, then that's what they should be advocating. Very interesting. What concerns are being expressed below by Harold Cardinal? And uh, had you read over this, the history of Canada's Indians is a shameful story of the white man's disinterested, his deliberate trampling of Indian rights, and his repeated betrayal of our trust. We should not be surprised, as for some peoples like the Beothic or Beothuk, their first contact with Europeans meant a sudden physical death. A century later, gen generations of Indians have grown up behind a buckskin curtain of indifference, ignorance, and all too often plain bigotry. Now at a time when our fellow Canadians consider the promise of the just society, once more the Indians of Canada are betrayed by a program which offers nothing better than cultural death, another genocide. So what's his concern? His concern is assimilation. So the message in six is very similar to his message up here in three, is the idea that we can't be assimilated because it'll lead to another death, a cultural death. And his ideology, his ideological perspective would be supported by these 79% right here. Then I had you look at some articles um, that uh, looked at should there be private property on reserves, and then I had you look at this article about the Indian Act. Um, we can certainly talk about these articles in our lesson today. I just wanted to go over those sources with you.